Hello, welcome to Creative You Podcast. I have my very colorful triangular cow on today. The theme this week is talking about patterns that deceive, maybe not intentionally, or pattern with patterns with mistakes. And you can save your lot of, uh, yourself a lot of trouble by going to Ravelry and looking at projects that have already been done to see what people comment. And this morning, I took a crochet book to the yarn shop. I own a yarn shop called Creative View. Hey, by the way, welcome to the new subscriber, Bambi Eye Girl, I believe. Hello, thank you for subscribing. And it was a crocheted shrug that was solid with little lace sleeves. And when I went on Ravelry and looked at the people that made it, the back was on open weave and the pattern didn't show me that. So I finished my Isla purse. I still have to put a little toggle there, but here's what I learned. In the photo, this is by Sarah Gross. You can buy it or as a PDF or you can get it free. I did use a fringe maker, which saved me a lot of trouble, but I used a yarn called Cascade Paradigm Shift. It's a worsted weight cotton. This is a dark navy blue, like a Kelly green. And what I didn't realize is that I hit the turquoise area for most of the purse and the navy blue. And then suddenly when I went to, to cutting fringe, it was almost all the navy blue green. So I don't know about that. Maybe if I get a toggle or a button that has some green, that's my dog. But it is a nice purse. Maybe I'll try it in a solid color. It was fun to make. I think I need to trim my fringe up a little bit. Um, yeah, I would gladly do it again, and but this time I think in a solid color, and I enjoyed making it. It was well written. So now talking about pat, how to look at a pattern, how to um, what you want to look for. So here's a crocheted magazine. Here's a pattern. You want to see if both ends look even, if everything looks okay. And actually that side rides up about an inch higher than that side. It may just be error. Um, you want to know what the back looks like. Hi there, Hartley. So there's another picture. And there they're showing you at least the bottom. I had shown you that pattern yesterday in a magazine of a vest that had the nice scooped bottom. And when people made it, it didn't scoop at all. So here's a baby sweater. And let's face it, babies don't wear scarves. They could choke themselves, but there's not a single picture that shows you what the neckline looks like. Now that bothers me. Did their sample turn out poorly and they threw a little scarf on? I mean, something wasn't right. Um, so that would make me hesitate. If I would see that it was a pattern on Ravelry but no projects. That means it wasn't test knitted. That would bother me. So here's a sweater. And I'm sure it's supposed to look baggy, but it looks like the bottom part is actually loose instead of like usually ribbing is tighter and usually draws in. It looks looser. That that would kind of make me think something's wrong. There they show it, but again, they don't show the back. Why wouldn't you show the back? You want to know what the back looks like. There's a 
sweater with maybe a shawl color, but there's another picture. And again, they don't show the back. If you're going to put time and money into something, I would want to know what the back looks like. So today at the shop, I was complaining about that pattern that I was complaining about yesterday. And Mary, Mary, if you're listening, hello, um, talked about this pattern. Uh, Cascade offers a lot of free patterns and I had a customer from Baltimore call me. She loved this free pattern. She wanted 12 different colors because it's a one skein project. And later she ordered the other six or seven other colors. Okay, a couple things. When they turn it around to be a bandana type shell, it just doesn't look right up there. Anyone can pull a, um, a stitch pattern from the internet and put it into a shawl or a hat. The designing element comes in when you figure out, okay, now how am I doing the decreases and maintaining the pattern? Or how am I doing the increases and maintaining the pattern? I once did a cabled hat out of a Debbie Maycomber book, and it was cables and seat stitch, and all of a sudden, when it got to the decrease, the pattern just had you do stockinette stitch, and it looks silly. So if you look at where the increases are, the designer just did stockinette stitch, and I, you can have your opinion, but I don't like that at all. So here's what Mary was telling me. She was telling me that one skein isn't enough to finish the shawl. So I went on to Ravelry and looked at the people that made it. And sure enough, people were saying I didn't have enough yarn to finish. Since it is a small shawlette anyway, and since it works in four repeats, if you look here, I don't know how well you can see this. There's one, two, three, four repeats. I'm not sure how many rows it is, maybe eight. So if you run out of yarn, what are you going to eliminate? Because you don't want to eliminate your last couple rows. You don't want to cut the, the stitch pattern off right in the middle. So that is a dilemma. And I'm wondering about this poor lady that bought all these single skeins to make these for gifts. What's going to happen when she doesn't have enough yarn to finish even one? So not good. Um, again, it helps to look and see what people are saying. And sometimes you have to go through a couple pages to find out what people are saying. Um, there was one more here. Sometimes you can find that things bunch up or, or don't look right. So I look at this man's zippered sweater and I like it. I want to see the back. It, um, is it cabled? Is it plain? There's another picture and another, but not a single picture of the back. That bothers me. Some patterns will show the model lifting up her arm so you can see how the arms look. If there's a special element, like a certain type sleeve, then they should have a picture showing you that. So there are, are a lot of well-written patterns out there, but just with this, if somebody buys all this yarn and maybe doesn't get to it for six months, nine months, maybe even a year, then what, what's going to happen? 
when you don't have enough yarn. Maybe by then the colors are discontinued. So this isn't, <laughs> as you can see, an old book. Modern American Prose, as you can see, the cover's gone and I've kept track of knitting rows on it. Copyright 1966. So William Saroyan, The Circus. The Circus is a great story about two boys that play hooky every year when the circus comes to town. And they get whacked really hard over and over and over again by the principal. And um, so the circus was everything, everything else we knew wasn't. It was adventure, travel, danger, skill, romance, comedy, peanuts, popcorn, chewing gum, and soda water. We used to carry water to the elephants and stand around afterwards and try to seem associated with the whole magnificent affair, the putting up of the big tent, the getting everything in order, and the worldly wise waiting for the people to come and spend their money. One day, Joey came tearing into the classroom of the fifth grade at Emerson School, 10 minutes late and without so much as removing his hat or explaining why he was late, shouted, Hey, Aram, the circus is in town. And sure enough, I'd forgotten. I jumped up and ran out of the room with poor old Miss Flippity screaming after me. Aram Gahuli again, whatever his name is. You stay in this room. Do you hear me? I heard her all right, and I knew what my not staying would mean. It would mean another powerful strapping from old man Dawson, but I couldn't help it. I was just crazy about a circus. So they talk about the circus and he does say, the memory of that strapping old man Dawson had given me, whoa. So they go on, they go to the circus. Again, he's talking about the strapping he's going to get. So first Joey and then me would bend down and old Mr. Dawson would get some powerful shoulder exercise while we tried not to howl. We wouldn't howl for five or six licks, but after that, we would howl like Indians coming. They used to hear us all over the school, and old man Dawson, after our visits got to be kind of regular, urged us politely to try to make a little less noise in as much as it was a school and people were trying to study. It ain't fair to the others, old man Dawson said. They're trying to learn something for themselves. We can't help it, Joey said. It hurts. <laughs> that I know, old man Dawson said, but it seems to me there's such a thing as modulation. I believe a lad can overdo his howling if he ain't thoughtful of others. Just try to modulate that awful howl a little. I think you can do it. Then he gave Joey a strapping of 20, and Joey tried his best not to howl so loud. After the strapping, his face was very red, and old man Dawson was very tired. How was that, Joey said. That was better, old man Dawson said. By far the most courteous you've managed yet. I did my best, Joey asked. Anyway, it's awfully embarrassing to go back to our seats in our room after howling that way. So then you get to the end where they escape and they go to the circus and um, <laughs> they have all their adventures. It goes on the whole circus. They're worried now that because they've played hooky every time and every year and all the days that they're going to be sent to reform school and the reform school officer is there. We saw both shows, the after one and the evening one. Then we helped with the work, taking the circus to pieces again. Then we went down to the trains and then home. I got home real late. In the morning, I was sleepy when I had to get up for school. They were waiting for us. Miss Flibbity didn't let us sit down for the roll call. She just told us to go to the office. I figured, well, here we go to reform school. 
Here they are, Mr. Dawson said to Stafford. Take them away if you like. So it gets to the point where they're going to get their strapping, their beating. And Mr. Dawson says, I think we're up to 30. Who's going to be first? Me, I said. All right, Aram, take a good hold of the chair. Brace yourself and try to modulate your howl. Yes, sir, I'll do my best, but 30 is an awful lot. Well, funny thing happened. He gave me 30, all right, and I howled all right, but it was a modulated howl. It was the most modulated howl I ever howled because it was the easiest strapping I ever got. I counted them and there were 30 all right, but they didn't hurt. So I didn't cry as I was afraid I might. It was the same with Joey. We stood there waiting to be dismissed. I'm awfully grateful to you boys, old man Dawson said, for modulating your house so nicely. I don't want people to think I'm killing you. We wanted to thank him for giving us such easy strappings, but we couldn't say it. I think he knew the way we felt, though, because he smiled in a way that gave us an idea he knew. Then we went back to class. It was swell because we knew everything would be all right till the county fair opened in September again. <laughs> I just thought I would share that funny story. I read that. And then I've read it again and again and again. So thank you for spending some of your day with me. And I'll see you again tomorrow. If you're here, I'll be here. And um, there's a lot going on in your country, but don't let it steal your joy and that God loves you so much. Take care and shine, baby, shine.